Yeah, do you want to start? Yeah, yeah. all Just set. Recording. Cool. All right, a fan interview. We're here. So, how you doing, bro? Doing good. Uh, you know, I'm, we're alive. We're here. Man, took a lot of doing, but we're here. Yeah. Uh, those who don't recognize you, introduce yourself and the premise of your visit to Montreal today. Uh, Howard from the band Devil You Know, formerly Kill Switch Engage, Blood Has Been Shed, various other bands that you don't know and don't want to know. And we are here to play some rock and roll tonight, or metal or whatever. You know. But hey, I'm in Montreal. It's raining and it feels nice. Indeed. The rain clean cleanses the air. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it, it's cooled things down. And hey, I actually kind of like cool and cold weather. Well, you are from the Northeast. True. As are we. So if you're from this area and you hate the cold, you complain about it, you have no place to say anything. No, not at all. So yeah, just in, enjoy it and just be lucky it's not, you know, coming with, you know, two feet of snow. So there you go. Yeah, man. So I would like to get the the new album talk uh, done first with because uh, I've been looking forward to new material from you for quite a while, obviously. Um, a lot of people have, and uh, it, it's a really aggressive record um, with your signature, you know, vocals and lyrics and stuff. Um, talk a bit about how, I guess, this project m may differ or may have similarities to some of your previous works, which you know, so many people have uh, connected with. Well, there's uh, there's a similar theme that uh, that this you know that that this has with this, the other stuff I have. So like, you know, there's this big black dude in it. Um, <laughs> but uh, other than that, you know, I mean, you know. I do sound like me. I, you, know, I, you can definitely kind of pick my voice out of the crowd, but at the same time, I definitely try and do some different things. And there's definitely a, you know some different singing and screaming and things like that in this. But, uh, but yeah, it was just a lot of fun to do. You know, uh, I didn't think I'd miss doing it, you know, but I guess I did because I really didn't think I'd be going back on a, back out on the road and. Here I am again. <laughs> Guitaring no, is fun. <laughs> no, it, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> no it, that really is it. You know, just uh, whenever you're, you know, whatever you're going through, you know, whatever your struggle is, whatever your, uh, you know, whatever your, your, your mind's, uh, whatever your mind's doing and whatever is going on with your life it just you know you can express it through this music in a way that you know, people get and uh, <laughs> and uh, wow you know even you know even the jaded fans of lamb go fan flip uh, <laughs> you know just hey uh, uh, I mean there really is just an expression of emotion through heavy music that you can't get out of uh, you know, out of like any other type of music, and and even though music kinda isn't music anymore now, it's really weird how you can not have to play an instrument and have a number one album. That's bizarre to me. Yeah, that, yeah but that's a whole another subject. But yeah, it just oh man, it it it, yeah, I, it always draws me back. You know, and, I mean, I was an oddball because I because I liked heavy music as, as a kid, and you know, you know, my family they always scratched their heads at that, you know. But, you know, but it, it's still just a huge part of my life. Yeah, it's probably going to stay that way. Yeah. We're talking about these, you know, number one hits that are, I guess, electronic. You can call it EDM or what have you. Um, this artist, Avicii, uh, has a lot of guest singers on his uh, singles and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
I always pictured you being able to, to do a track with Avicii. I mean, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, the thing is, I, I love, like, you know, pushing the envelope and trying different stuff. You know, the, but yeah, it's still very strange to me that it, that it's blown up the way it has. And, uh, you know, no disrespect to any, uh, you know, any artist who's doing that. But much disrespect to any artist that's doing that. <laughs> no, it's just, it still just blows my mind. Yeah. But hey, you know, you know, things change. That's it. Well, I mean, it seems that along with the rise of, I guess, if you want to call it fake music or artificial music, uh, pseudo music, uh, so has this form of music and all its, you know, subtypes gain more credibility as well and 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 uh, you know more I guess popularity in 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 some cases obviously as the pie's gotten bigger so is there less pie for everybody yeah um, but I guess what are the or some of the reasons why you think so many young people people of all ages are drawn to um, you know raw authentic uh displays of anger, sadness, anguish, as as you've been able to convey, as a lot of other artists have been able to convey why. What are some of the, I guess, realities nowadays for young people that are making them angry and sad and, and lonely? I mean, uh, the world is a bitter place. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even, I mean, just think of how much it changed from, like, when you went to school and, and like, how it is now going to school, you know, just the things that, you know, kids are subjected to and experience, it's mind-blowing, you know, it's so different, you know, like, I mean, I didn't have to think about, like, guns and crack and stuff like that when I was a kid, now that's, like, normal, everyday thing. You know, it's like going to school and having to go through a uh, through a metal detector. It's like, what? That's that's mind blowing. But think of that's kind of the reality of things. And and plus, uh, now thanks to uh, thanks to the interweb, everything everything is like easily and readily available, including just anonymous just anonymous dickheads. Everyone can be as mean or as crass or as, uh, you know, as dumb as they want to be. And so, like, a lot of times kids are just getting completely ostracized. And so, it's like when you feel that you're just not one of the crowd, I mean, that's when this music steps in. And it's just, and you find people who are like minded. Yeah, it's true. Bullying is, I guess, at an all time high. You'd think that, you know, social media has leveled the playing field and everyone can have a voice, but the hierarchy just continues to propagate itself in, you know, on this platform. And even if everyone has a voice, some voices are perceived as cooler than others. Mm -hmm. uh, any kind of wisdom that you could have, or you could offer for some young people who are struggling through bullying and, you know, uh, are struggling with acceptance versus, uh, you know, versus I guess rejection, things like this. Any kind of you know, wisdom that maybe you could offer these people who are struggling? Yeah, I mean, uh, in in one way, like I said, when it's online, it's almost always anonymous. It's there's no face to it, and there's so there's no meaning to it. So you know, don't think about it. Don't worry about it easier said than done. I mean, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a social media guy. You know, I, I don't go on sites like that, you know, and so therefore, to me, it's, it's almost non-existent. You know, uh, I can't imagine going on Facebook and putting my life on there as some do. I mean, and I'm not saying boycott it. I'm saying boycott it. But, <laughs> but just, yeah, it's like it, it gets better. Yeah, I mean, uh, it just takes time, but yeah, things get better. But wow, 
So it just it's such an easy out to be just an absolute ass online. Yeah, and and that's the thing. It's like uh, most people they do that stuff and give it no thought. It's like, ooh, I'm gonna say this or whatever online, and then they're on to the next thing. So that's the thing. It's it's meaningless. Yeah, and I mean, still a little different. You know, in your everyday life when people are are face to face and they're being just yeah, the worst the worst examples of human beings. But yeah, it it just it gets better. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much all I can say. Yeah. In a world that tears everyone apart, splits, splits people apart, breaks up communities, breaks up families, um, and strives to do this on a regular basis, this is how the system is built nowadays. Um, what are some ways that one could empower themselves and strengthen themselves uh, to resist a lot of these, you know, I guess, uh, intrusive attempts to destroy people. Just, you know, uh, be self-reliant. Just, uh, you know, if you're different, embrace it. You know, I mean, you don't have to go over the top and have 50 million piercings and tattoos. That's not being independent. Being independent is just being yourself, despite what's going on. You know, and just yeah, don't conform. Just be who you are, and and actually enjoy being you. That's that's just uh, that's the easiest way to not have a care in the world. Is just accept who you are. I mean. It, I mean it's just your life is a finite part of like the whole you know human experience the whole the whole time you know the whole timeline of life so just enjoy it you know, and and just you know screw what anyone thinks just enjoy being who you are and make the most of it what are some of the things that you've I guess found to be uh, a threat to your well-being, and that you've seen, uh, you know, be a threat to others' well-being. That maybe you could send a little word of caution out to people who are considering doing this, trying that, doing this. Of course, everyone has to have their own experience and try things, but we all know certain things. You try them, and you could fall down a black hole real quick. So, oh yeah, yes. Just anything in excess. Like, I mean, that covers the whole thing from, you know, drugs to, to you know, sugar. <laughs> you know, I mean, all of these things are just readily available. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, I mean, yeah, everyone has to walk their own path. You know, but, Maybe a fill-in singer for you guys if you can't make a show once in a while. Nope. <laughs> 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 but yeah, just anything in excess is is just going to be bad. But just I mean, yeah, everyone walks their own path. Everyone, you know, they'll try different things or whatever. But just you know, moderation and enjoyment of life. Yeah, just stick with that, and yeah, and you know, things should go okay. Mm -hmm. One thing that has a lot of uh, sugar in it that I'm not sure, you know, people are necessarily so aware is alcohol. Yep. Um, maybe because I know you've had some health issues that you seem to overcome. You look pretty healthy to me. Feel good. <laughs> Screw you, diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They say you know, the pharmacies don't want you to heal yourself or treat yourself or better yourself. They want you to keep being sick. How did you better yourself and what are some of the things that maybe you're a little bit more careful now around? Um, for me, it was like, get a dog and walk a lot. <laughs> that, that truly helped me, man. It was like the best thing in the world for me. Yeah, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, everyone, well, not everyone, but I mean, I, definitely some people think of, you know, the whole, uh, you know, the whole American, you know, pharmaceutical company, you know, doctors and everything, they want you sick. I don't know about that, and I just don't care. I just, <laughs> I want to be healthy and happy, you know, and, and so for me, I, I just searched it out and found what worked for me. Uh, and just I enjoyed nature a lot more than I thought I would. It's like even right now it's raining, but hey, there's it's like wow, there's no lightning and thunder. I would much rather be fishing right now. Yeah, uh, that's just that's a simple pleasure. It's so much fun. Talk a little bit about that um, about the power of nature. Um, you know, a lot of people seem buried in their phones. They don't, you know, look up and smell the roses so to speak, uh, we come from nature and we go back to it and we live with nature all around us. It seems that so many of us don't recognize that until either it's too late or some crisis hits us. Um, what does nature mean to you? And I guess what are some different aspects of nature that, that you really value? Man. For me, it's like being on the water is just absolutely a joy. It's and that's the thing. It's like you know the outside world is gone. When you do that, and you know, and you know, like even just you know walking through the woods and things like that, and it's like wow, it's it's just beautiful. It's like you know the trees, the smells, all the things out there that can kill you in an instant. It's it's great, and yeah, I know a lot of people will just get lost because. Everything's at your fingertips. But I actually went over three years without a cell phone, and it was fantastic. And that's that was a, like a big turning point for me. It completely changed who I was. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure no one's gonna you know watch this and be like, man, Howard's right. I'm not gonna have a cell phone for three years. Nah, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I know this, but yeah. I've, you can take a little bit of time, turn the phone off, go for a walk, go fishing. It, it just, you'll just see you're missing out on so much. And a lot of it is getting lost. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like video games and Netflix as much as the next person, but man, I love being outside. It's great. And it's completely worth losing a little bit of, uh, a little bit of technology and time for. Mm -hmm. That's, that's very well said, and I, I hope that kind of inspires a couple people to turn off their devices a little more often and go check out what's happening out there. Cause that is going to inspire no one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh wow, Howard likes nature. I'm going to post about that. <laughs> they probably probably be like uh, some nature Twitter is going to you know, retweet that. And... Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he, he's into that. Hashtag. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> it's a funny world we're living in. Um, you know, things have changed so much. To bring it back to music just a little bit, um, someone who's actually, whose band was on this shirt, um, a guy, you know, Doc Coyle, Oh yeah. Um, if we maybe I don't know, show that on the camera for a second. That that shirt came from Danny from God Below, as a matter of fact. Get that a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember this, and it's hilarious. <laughs> How's that thigh doing, Mike Ski? <laughs> I remember that. Just it was, uh, Mike got stabbed in the leg then, and. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I was just like, you're going to be okay, man. And then I immediately started making fun of his legs. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the worst human being in the world at times. <laughs> That's great, though. <laughs> if you can't laugh at injury. Oh, yeah. You know. Um, but, yeah, why would you do that to someone at, at a show? Let alone anyone, anywhere else in the world. But at a show, it's like... To the most positive guy I've ever met in my life. <sighs> more, of the, more of the circumstances behind it. Random act. You know, I still don't know all the details to this day. 
I do know that guy got the crap beat out of him. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Well-deserved crap beating, but yeah. come on. Um, so, Doc from God Forbid recently wrote a blog entry about the changing uh, tides of you know, metal, the death of metalcore as we knew it, I guess. Um, you know, a few bands have survived this era. Most didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, some was just due to changing tastes. Others due to lack of touring, whatnot. Um, a lot of people, you know, now don't know. And they wouldn't even have a reason to care. But the fact that the current metal scene came from the '90s hardcore scene. Yeah, totally. Um, in metal in the '90s was not stale and dying. Death metal was very active underground. Black metal was happening mm-hmm. in Europe starting to happen in the States, um, and hardcore had turned metal, completely metal. Yep. And I guess uh, the bands were just so passionate and and so technically, you know, innovative that, you know, that... The uh, that's post-rock, I think. <laughs> Fantastic. You sure Circus Survive's not playing around the corner? All right. Wow. But yeah, it, obviously that guy's doing something that I probably should do, and that's warm up. <laughs> In a minute. <laughs> no, I'm just saying I, I should do that. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> so you're uh, you're a one take kind of guy. I guess that is my uh, that is my lot in life. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> probably sound better if I warmed up, but yeah. Yeah, I'm too busy drinking Gatorade and, <laughs> and uh, watching bad movies. <laughs> You're just a regular guy? Pretty much. Yeah. So, I mean, there are so many bands from that era that I fell in love with um, that, you know, left me heartbroken when they broke up. Obviously, you know, these guys. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, a lot of the bands in that shirt. Uh, all at war playing shows again. Which yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, how did that scene start and why did it end according to you? Um, I think it just started because it was a way to express how you felt. I think uh, it ended because, you know, life happens. You know, I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, people's music tastes different. You know, it, it differs and, and and changes. I mean, you know, some of the bands that you listened to a, a long time ago, you, you'll hear it now and just go, why did I like that? But, uh, but yeah, just, you know, life happens. You know, things just move on. And, you know, if you're lucky to have, you know, some longevity and a career doing this sort of thing, awesome. You know, that's fantastic. If not... Uh, you know, big deal. You know, you, you move on and do something else, and you know, uh, maybe go fishing. Yeah. Sorry, I, that's just pretty much what I want to do at all times. <laughs> I mean, would you be interested in doing a fishing show of sorts on your own? A little, a little fishing show on the side? Yes, I would. Oh, I would love to do that, and. I, if, if the opportunity comes, you know, hey, you, you'll see me. You know, if, if I can do it, I'll do it. Heartbeat. That'd be great. Yeah, I don't think I'm the greatest fisherman in the world. There's guys who are so schooled and knowledgeable about that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, maybe I could be the next Black Bill Dance. <laughs> what's funny is that maybe about... <laughs> one percent of anyone who's going to see this it will be like he made a bill dance joke everyone else will be like who's bill dance google (laughs) and they'll know exactly yeah um heavy montreal four or five years ago tapery came through and chris Beatty used to write from my old site and uh there's a big lake in the back of the park there jean drapeau so he asked if i could bring him some fishing poles and bait so I brought them some poles and, and some bait, and then him and Frank went fishing. That's awesome. And caught a couple things, and I uh, did a, a couple of videos fishing with Hatebreed, and that was a fun time. Oh, man, that'd be 
be fantastic. Well, look, I mean, uh, if anybody out there, you're back home where you live, anybody's inspired, you know, if, are you on the West Coast now? You live on the West Coast? Oh, no. Oh, you're East Coast still. Yeah, um, West Coast, it's, it, it, it's great out there, but, you know, seasons are still nice. Yeah, you know, I mean, the thing is, I don't mind cold weather. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I mean, we do a film production company, and I would not be opposed to the idea of maybe talking about a little fishing show. I would not be opposed to that either. That could be interesting. Man, it'd be so much fun. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I don't know, man. There's just an excitement when when something hits your line because you don't know what it is. And, you know, in, until you pull it up, you have no clue. I mean, you can definitely tell at times just from the way it hits your line, the way it pulls, and, you know, where it drags, and if it, like, tries to dive away. and it, You know, you can definitely tell at times, you know, certain types of fish. But, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I... I've become very avid with it. Very cool. To what degree is this band going to take you on the road uh, throughout a given year? Are you planning on being as aggressive with the touring cycle this time around as you were? It's it's looking like we're going to be doing a lot of touring. And again, at the same time, I don't know if anybody tours as much as Kill Switch. <laughs> I mean, even now, man. <laughs> like, it's like, well, um, we're going to start touring. <laughs> I'll see you in a year and a half. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's just how that band operates. You know, I mean, I don't think we'll tour that much, but we're going to tour a lot. Mm-hmm. Definitely. One band uh, I recall Mike Gitter being interested in signing was God Below many years ago. Man, I loved God Below. So heavy. So so heavy yeah Remember they, didn't they have like three guitars at one yeah. time yeah that was nuts so heavy they'd play they'd, their stacks would take up the entire stage along with the guitarists oh yeah those, those were big dudes too yeah and then Danny would be in the pit you know yep God below have a lot of fans in Montreal uh, they toured about to the extent of the opposite of Kill Switch so as Kills played Tons of shows. They played too few. Mm-hmm. Uh, with brand new sin, they got going a little more with the you know aggressive touring. But they're one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, they made such an impact on me. The shows that I saw here were undeniable. I was like, this is the next Metallica if they can continue. Yeah, they could have been monstrous. They yeah. really could have. Um, I just you know I saw them play on New Year's in Syracuse. Actually, I played. Oh man. Just the, this past year to about 150 people. It's very intimate. It was a great time. I filmed it actually. I drove down. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm good buddies with those guys. Uh, they're all doing okay, you know? Yeah. Remember when Syracuse was the hub of heavy music? It's unbelievable. Yeah. John Buskey from Santa Sangre, another victim. He just made a post about that. Santa Sangre! Oh my gosh! <laughs> what up, Tom Dice? <laughs> The singer of Sound of Song actually just joined a band called Ego Destroys um, out of Syracuse. Devin Chavis on drums and uh, uh, on guitar, Corey, Corey from Sound of Sangre on drums. And uh, they just played a show. They're really good. They're they're actually really good. So, you know, the guys are getting back in the mix a bit. Uh, That's cool. Come on. <laughs> Santa Sagre, that's great. <laughs> that's funny, yeah, because uh, I follow these old guys you know, religiously, but uh, that's funny to hear your reaction towards them, you know? Oh, yeah, man, come on. Uh, I said, uh, you know, I just played uh, guitar for them all the time, so yeah, man. and plus I you know, played a show with them or two, you know. Man, those were good times. Busky was talking about how, you know, the 90s in Syracuse were just, I mean, the that was an unbelievable scene. Oh, yeah. And uh, just four hours south of here, so we used to always drive down for shows, and those bands would always come up here. That's what helped us spread the straight edge movement, obviously. The whole, you know, vegan straight edge movement mm-hmm. really was spearheaded by the spirit of Syracuse, I would say. Yeah. Um, and then again, life got in the way, right? Life came and. Definitely have some man busky. That dude played for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Terror. That guy was the hardcore handyman. <laughs> yeah, good style too. Yeah. 
that year that I saw Santa Sangre uh, at Hellfest, I also saw what has been shed for the last time, because most of your shows in Montreal are cancelled, for whatever reason. Yeah, who knows. Everyone was waiting for you to come by, actually, I brought these just uh, to get to get oh, them signed. and look at that. That's... Man, that's a bunch of nonsense right there. <laughs> I'm sure the fans would agree now, but back then... <laughs> I don't even know if I have this stuff. <laughs> I'll, That's hilarious. I'll procure you some copies of those. But uh, I can't tell you, you know, how much I, I rocked out to that stuff, you know? And Oh, man. Those were the days. Yeah. For real. It's funny. I used to miss Blood Has Been Shed so much, and then I started seeing all your old shows pop up on YouTube. I'm like, well, they're back. You know? Who they? Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'll have to not search that out. <laughs> I'll be sure to force them into your inbox. <laughs> I have no interest in watching myself. <laughs> you still we just shot a we just shot a new video and got like a clip of it and they were like, Yeah, everybody watch the scene and you know, see what you're I got about thirty seconds in, I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> you used to wear really baggy pants and mosh on stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And playing skate parks. Yep. Oh yeah, I definitely, uh, definitely had a few, uh, a few good shows in, uh, like in the middle of a pipe. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> it's freaking hilarious. Big echoes too. Yep. It's like you're in an arena, but you're not. Oh yeah, it's like you need no reverb. It's just there. It's <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> um, that mysterious fourth album that that ever came out. So many people were asking and waiting patiently, thinking that your departure from Kill Switch would bring about that. Of course, I understand people have families, people work, don't have time so much. I totally get that. The band could not tour. I understand all these things. How come a fourth album couldn't be put out for all the fans? It was just a matter of timing and everything else. I mean, it, I mean it's still there. It just you know, hasn't been completely finished with it and to this day I still have heard nothing like it it is the weirdest heaviest thing ever it is just it's just it's bizarre it's cool but man it's wow <laughs> I seriously I I have not heard anything that sounds like it I mean, Corey, guitarist, that dude is a madman. Yeah. I, you know, the thing is, you know, I don't know if it has to do with, uh, you know, him having kids or, or uh, you know, getting struck by lightning. <laughs> you know, who, who knows? But for some reason, man, just, he's, he's on a different playing field. Mm -hmm. That album is one of the great mysteries of, <laughs> of the metalcore <laughs> movement. <laughs> it, it may see the light of day at some point. I would love for it to. That'd be great. That would be great. Hopefully, being in this band, you know, affords you a little more creative freedom and artistic freedom to do what you want to do. That'd be cool. When you want to do it, and look, I mean, I wish you a long career and a long life ahead. Whatever you wish for, you've brought so much, uh, you know, comfort to my life, to JP's, to so many people's lives with mm. your work so uh, we thank you for your you know perseverance and all this and keeping you I guess yeah, yeah unfortunately that's uh, it's pretty much all I got is being me <laughs> so yeah if I can uh, if I can go through a, a bunch more crap in my life hey, I'll be able to write about some more stuff <laughs> maybe not <laughs> about fishing next sweet no. seriously it's just Man, that's just that's my haven, man. That's that's my complete, utter you know, removal from everything. Just so yeah, go fishing. Enjoy. Great advice. 
great words to end this interview. Thanks so much for your time, Howard. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Much appreciated. Cool. <laughs> thanks, hand out of the blue that hadn't been on camera the whole time. <laughs> it's actually been in my pants the whole time, so. Sweet. Well, that's why it was so warm and clammy. Yeah. Not in the pocket either. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.